Hey guys, Sam Millard here. Uh, today Jake and I are up in the Smoky Panhandle in Northern Idaho doing a review on the Leica Geovid HDB Edition 2200. Okay, this video review is meant to be a supplement to the text review I've already published on panhandleprecision.com. It's going to be more of an overview and we're going to include a lot of screenshots where we actually video what you're seeing through the display. Uh, if you want the real technical details, I encourage you to go check them out at panhandleprecision.com. Okay, if you aren't familiar with the GeoVid, it is a uh, world-class binocular. It uses the same HD lenses that Leica uses in its other high-end binoculars. It also has a rangefinder in it that's uh, powerful enough to reach out to 2,200 yards is what this is rated for. On top of that, the B designation in HDB means that it has ballistic capabilities. It can give you uh, come-ups either in inches, mils, or MOA to hit the target with the first shot. If you don't want to use the ballistic capabilities, it has a built-in feature that will let you measure inclination angle, station pressure, and air temperature to input into your own ballistic solver. Okay, the GeoVid is available in either 8 power or 10 power. This is a 10 power model. It has a 42 millimeter objective lens. It's what they call a Perger Poro Prism design, so it doesn't really look like a roof prism or a, a traditional Poro Prism. And it has an open bridge design, so what that gives you is a real comfortable, easy to hold binocular. The primary and secondary buttons are right here with an easy reach of your index finger if you're right-handed. If you're a bow hunter and you're a right-handed bow hunter, you'll be carrying your bow like this, and you'll hold on to your range-finding binoculars like that, so it'll work pretty slick. The primary button is what does all your range-finding uh, duties. It, you hit it once, the aiming square comes up, you hit it again, and it bounces the target and gives you a range right in the display. The secondary button is what you use to measure inclination angle, station pressure, and air temperature. Okay, it has a very smooth, sensitive focus ring, just like the UltraVids. As soon as you start moving it, your focus is changing. It has separate diopter control on each lens. Uh, the reason for that is so that you can adjust the LED display that's in the right barrel exactly to your eye and then sync it all up on the left side. Uh, it has click adjustable eye cups so you can pull them all the way out or you can push them all the way in so if you wear glasses it's no big deal. They actually feel pretty durable and they have very positive stops. It's fully waterproof which is uh, something that we just really demand in all of our hunting optics. I actually tested these by putting them in a creek in about a foot and a half of water put a big rock down on top of them to keep them from uh, floating away and left them there for an hour. Uh, that was back in May and they're still working just fine so uh, I don't think there's any problem there. It has one battery, it's a CR2 and it sits down in this compartment uh, under the, the right barrel. To get to it you just pull this threaded cap off, it has an o-ring on it to seal it off, battery goes in, put the cap back on, you're done. Okay, as far as rangefinder performance goes, this is rated for 10 yards out to 2200 yards. I confirmed it will go down to 10 yards, so if you're an archery hunter, you're good to go there. Uh, the 2200 yards, I've been able to hit 2200 yards and a little bit further in really good conditions, meaning uh, no direct sun right on the target I'm trying to range. So at first light or an hour or two after and then last light, as long as I don't have a real harsh sun on the target, I'll hit 2200 yards no problem. When there's really hard sun on it, I can push right up to 2,000 yards with it, uh, and sometimes just a little bit more, but it just won't quite get to 2,200. Okay, as far as realistic rangefinder testing, uh, I haven't gone out and you know tried to bounce things on the highway or buildings or water towers or cars or anything like that. You know, all my testing has been out in the woods, right where I shoot, right where I hunt, and it's been on targets that uh, either I'm either going to be shooting at or on targets that are next to something I'm going to shoot at, like a tree. So uh, in my testing, what I found is that it will range animals out to 2,000 yards and beyond under really good conditions. Uh, one in particular that I remember is a cow elk that I had up in a, 
a grassy shoot, I had a Vectronix PLRF-10 mounted on a tripod, I was using it to check the accuracy of the GeoVid, and I was bouncing a rock face out there, and the cow came out and started feeding, I put the GeoVid on that cow, and just got one return after the other right on her, and I could pull off to the side and down below, and confirm that by ranging a rock face. And then I got the PLRF-10 up there and started ranging the cow, and they were within one yard of each other at a little over 2,100 yards. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna shoot an elk at 2,100 yards, but, uh, you know, having that kind of juice in the rangefinder tells me that when the time comes and that cow elk is standing out there at 1,200 yards, it's just gonna give me an instant return. So uh, that's how I do my rangefinder testing. Jake and I had this out early this spring doing a little ground squirrel hunting. Uh, we ranged bears with it, uh, ground squirrels at six or 700 yards, steel plates, trees, everything out to a mile and beyond. And uh, you know, rarely was I disappointed in its performance. Okay, during testing, most of my formal testing was done right off this tripod. This is the Leica tripod mount. It just uses a big rubber band over the top that holds them in place and it has a nice rubber cushion on one side. I have it on this tripod head so that I can articulate it anywhere I want to go. It works pretty slick and when I find something I can just lock it down and it doesn't move. So, uh, you know, all my testing has been done like that. That's not to say that you can't use these in a handheld fashion. When I first started carrying these during uh, spring bear season and shed season, I ranged just about everything I could see with them and I had several ranges over 2,000 yards where I would get repeatable results like on a rock face or something like that. So you can do it handheld. Having said that, I think to get the most out of any rangefinder, you're going to want to have it super steady. So either on a tripod or laying over a pack or braced up against a tree. Okay, as far as optical quality, I'll admit I'm, in, I'm biased. I really like Leica optics. Just about everything I use now has the little red symbol on it. Uh, before that, I was a diehard Swarovski fan. Between the two optics, I'm not sure there's a whole lot of quality difference. In other words, the clarity of both of them are superb. I mean, there's just no better word for it. They are top-notch optics. Uh, what I found with the Leicas is that they're a little bit more true to color. So in other words, when you're looking at something and uh, you know you see it as it is, you see the colors, you see the different shades of the colors and all that, when you look through Leica optics, you see exactly the same thing, only magnified. So uh, anyway, one of the first things I was asked when people found out I was going to review these was how do they work in low light? Apparently there's a conception that they don't work well in low light because of the rangefinder. So what I did was I took them out with my 742 Swarovski uh, SLCs, 8x30 Swarovski SLCs, and my 8x42 Leica UltraVids, and I ran them all off tripods and looked at last light, looked at first light several times, uh, in bad conditions sometimes, and other times it was bluebird conditions. And what I can tell you is from what I could see, you aren't giving up anything with the GeoVids. If anything, because of the 10 power magnification, I actually ended up seeing a little bit better, uh, longer than I could with my 742s, 830s, or 842s. So uh, I don't think it's a concern that you're giving up any kind of optical clarity, quality, or low light performance with these binoculars. Okay, let me show you how this comes off the tripod mount and a little bit more about how the tripod mount works. So there's the shelf and basically the binocular just sits right on top of it and then the band goes over and locks down on this tab. So let's get this out of the way. And we'll talk a little bit about the ballistic functions of the HDB. Now the way I use the HDB is with what they call a custom curve 
and a straight up MOA correction. So when I range a target, I actually have the ballistic coefficient and the muzzle velocity and the sight height of the bullet and the gun that I'm using uh, uploaded into this on a micro SD card and it uses that to give me a MOA correction to one tenth resolution. So uh, say if I'm shooting you know, 520 yards with my 300 wind mag and I need 8.3 minutes to hit the target, that's what it's going to tell me, 8.3. Now I don't have any experience with the older model GeoVids, but apparently they didn't give you that resolution. In other words, they rounded it to a whole number either up or down. This gives you a correction, an MOA, right to one-tenth of a decimal point. Okay, the other correction formats it works in are holdover, uh, and click value. So in the holdover, basically all it is is they're telling you how many inches you need to hold over the target if you're ranging in yards to hit that target. If you're using meters, it'll tell you that in centimeters. Uh, in MOA, it'll also give you click adjustments. So if you're running uh, one-third minute dials, it'll give you uh, corrections in one-third minute clicks. It'll also give you quarter minute clicks. Uh, you can also have this adjust for you in mills. When you're in mills format, it's going to give you either uh, five clicks per mill or ten clicks per mill, and it's going to read C and number of clicks. So if you're running a standard, you know, tactical style scope like a Night Force or something that has uh, one tenth click values in every click of the scope, all you have to do is look at that value. So if uh, you know the shot calls for uh, 6.1 mills to make the shot the value is going to come up 61, so you just add that one decimal point to it. Okay, that was the standard correction format. It also works in what's called EHR, Equivalent Horizontal Range, and what that is is uh, basically a yardage conversion system. So what you do is you build a, a BDC turret or a reticle or a range card or whatever you have, and you build that at standard temperature, which is 68 degrees according to Leica, and sea level, which is 29.92. Once you have that set up, if you have this in EHR mode, what it's going to do is it's going to give you a real range under the conditions that you're in. In other words, just a line of sight range. So we're at about 5,000 feet here. It's going to give me uh, that range, and it's going to take that range, and it's going to account for the fact that I'm so much higher than sea level and uh, probably a little bit warmer right now than 68 degrees, and it's going to convert that to a yardage that matches the correction I would need to take the shot for sea level and standard temperature. So if the, the yardage is 805 yards here, real yardage, and I know that I'm going to need less corrections than if I was at sea level, you know, the number might be something like 760 yards. So you'd take your BDC reticle and turret and you would shoot that target for 764 yards. Okay, what EHR is not is something for you to plug into your ballistic solver uh, under all conditions. It is only designed to be used in a BDC system like a turret, a range card, or a reticle. Okay, built right into the rangefinder are 12 generic ballistic curves that you can use. If you find one of those curves matches up to the, the profile of your rifle and the ammunition you're using, you're golden. You can use that curve, uh, set it for that curve, and it'll give you corrections based off that curve. If you go that route, you're going to be good to 875 yards for corrections that the binoculars give you. If you use a custom curve, that extends the range to 1,000 yards. Custom curves use a micro SD card that you uh, actually put a custom profile on through Leica's website and then plug into, you plug that card, into the slot inside the battery compartment. That's what I use. The only downside to it is you're going to have to true it a little bit. So even though the the trajectory in inches, because you can see that on Leica's website, if the trajectory in inches line up, 
you're probably still going to have to adjust it a little bit to get your MOA or Mills corrections right on the money. I was able to get this curve dialed in on these binoculars to a thousand yards to within one click, so less than a quarter minute of applied ballistics and bullet flight. So, uh, you know, that's good enough for me. In Mills, there's no difference at all. Once I set it on Mills, it's exactly the same correction. So, you know, within a quarter of a minute, that's good enough. This has no wind provision whatsoever built into it. Uh, it won't display anything. There isn't even a generic wind provision. So you're going to need something else or either a, a chart tape to your stock or you're going to have to carry something or you're going to have to have a Kestrel or a ballistic solver to let you know what the wind correction is. In my opinion, after using this for four months now, I would say that this with either a Kestrel Elite or a Sportsman, you could tackle any shot you want as far as you could shoot. Okay, so what's the point if I have to carry a Kestrel or another solver or whatever to poke out further distances or read the wind? Well, I'll tell you the biggest advantage to, to this whole entire unit is the fact that you're already glassing through binoculars for your target. And when you see that target, all you have to do is push that button. And within a second, you have a correction to shoot that target as long as you're a thousand and in. So, uh, you know, I know there's other... Uh, devices on the market that give you a range and everything right in the, you know, or rather a correction right in the rangefinder display. But these are binoculars that you're actually watching the target through already, and all you have to do is push a button. It automatically factors in all of your environmental conditions and your angle and just gives you a range to the target. That's pretty sweet. All right, guys, that does it for our video review. I'll add one thing I forgot to mention. I've been carrying these in an Alaska Guide Creations Denali Bino Pack. That's what these little leashes are for. Uh, when you have them out of the pack, these leashes keep them hooked up to the shoulder harness so you, know, you can't drop it on the ground. Be sure to check out the full text review, the comprehensive review of the binoculars at PanelPrecision.com. There's also a complete article that covers nothing but the ballistic functions of the GeoVid. So uh, if you want to know what makes it tick and what its capabilities are and how it all works, be sure to read that. If you haven't guessed by now, I really like these binoculars. I, uh, I definitely recommend them to a long range hunter and they're going to be what I'm going to be using this fall. So uh, make sure to check them out. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.